The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm gonna to be discussing a product that's actually been around quite a while, in and out of production, and this is the Retro 2. This is a cart dumper and reader, and it actually can preserve your save files and the ROMs of your older video games to a computer where you can play them forever. And so I think this is a very important product and I think it's something that collectors may want to consider picking up for their collection. I received this and the cart adapters from Stone Age Gamer where they sell this product on their website. And so I'm going to take a look at this and the various adapters and give you my thoughts about it. Let's take a look. The base device is about the size of a 3DS and can hook up to various things, including PC and Pandora. What it does is it reads Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, Sega Genesis, and Sega Mega Drive carts. And it can save files and ROMs for usage on other devices. Really cool. If you're looking just to play ROMs out there, this is not the device for you. This is for a collector that wants to preserve either the backup save files or rare game ROMs or prototypes that you have in your collection. The device comes with a micro USB cable to hook up to various devices as well as two controller inputs for both Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis compatible controllers. My big focus was to take a look at my various betas and pre-production carts that I had in my collection to see if there was any differences, as well as backing them up. First up is gonna be my Formula One Grand Prix cart, which I do believe is a little different. So here we go. You uh, pretty much put a cartridge in, you ret retroed, and you then transfer the ROM to your desktop and then open up your emulator of choice. I went to emulator zone to get these. You can go wherever you want. Open up an emulator. Once you configure your controller, I'll show you that later, and then play your ROM. And so this prototype had a few subtle differences and options before beginning the game, even came up as a different ROM name. It just said Title Japan. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. And so here are the different options, uh, maybe to help the developer out, I don't know, but it was pretty cool to see the differences uh, when booting this up. Now here's the actual release and as you can see there's just a few slight differences with uh, playing it really cool. Here's a Jack Nicholas Power Challenge Golf cart and pre-production and review copy I've had in my collection a long time. While I didn't notice any differences playing or seeing anything different on the title screens there could be slight differences with these games and so the ROM file did have some different letters and numbers behind it, so that was kind of cool. But I don't know if that means there's any differences, but it needs further investigation. But at least I have it saved on my computer, and the ROM will be preserved now. It's very important, and fellow collectors out there, back up your rare stuff and back up your prototypes. It would be terrible to have such a rare game lost because of just not being able to get around to a computer to save it. Here's a PGA Tour golf cart I've had in my collection for a while. And what I really like about this device, maybe you're not into prototypes or rare games, but save files. You can transfer your save files and transfer them to your desktop, easy as drag and drop. And then you can play them in your emulator where you left off and your save is preserved. That's really important, you know. The progress, the time that you spent on a game, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that want to keep their progress of a game. And, you know, in the old days, uh, you know, these, these batteries and these carts aren't going to last forever. And so this is a good way to back things up. Here's my Barkley Shut Up and Jam beta. And I, I, I didn't notice any differences. And the ROM was the exact same when I uploaded it to my computer. So there's that. I also recommend when you're backing up your games to other devices, do it multiple places. You know, hard drives do crash, things can be lost, and it would be terrible if you did the right thing to back up, you know, a rare ROM or a save 
file only to have that be lost due to a hardware fail. So yes, I think this is really important, especially with some of this uh, hardware aging, these cartridges and these save files aren't gonna last forever. Well, what about homebrews? Well, this thing works with homebrews. And so this is Cave Story. This was a, a homebrew made and it's awesome and was put on physical from a friend of mine. Thank you, Mr. Wizard. Does it work with 32X? Kind of. You have to actually dismantle the 32X cart and just have the bare PCB in the retro too, but it does work and I was able to get the ROM onto my computer and play it in an emulator. The good news is that with Super Famicom and Super Nintendo official releases, no problem. However, I did have a, uh, a review copy of Super Tetris 2 and I was not able to dump it. It actually uh, disconnected my retro. I don't know if I needed to uh, update it or not, but I was able to test the uh, PCB bear in my Super NT and it looks to be an exact release copy, no differences. But wait, there's more. Stone Age Gamer offers uh, some of the other commercial plugins that you can add to the Retro 2 so that it can dump and play additional ROMs. This is the Sega Master System one. And overall, I was successful with it. One small issue is I had an issue with it acknowledging the controller using the emulator Fusion. Now it could be my emulator, there's several other Sega Genesis emulators out there, but I just had an issue with that. Also, I, I tried uploading Sydney Hunter, it's a homebrew from Collector Vision, and I wasn't able to uh, dump the file, it just didn't, it didn't acknowledge it. So Stone Age Gamer also sent me two other adapters. Now, real quick, before you use the Game Boy or the N64 adapter, you need to flip this switch down to the smaller voltage. Now, the uh, Game Boy plug-in worked great with Game Boy Color, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance. And I used Visual Boy Advance as the emulator and it played great. It was easy to set up the controller. I used the Super Nintendo controller to play my Game Boy game in this emulator it was pretty good. And overall, I was, I was happy with the performance. I definitely see people using this, especially for their saves, especially for their Pokemon saves. Nice thing about these emulators is there's a lot of filters and options to make it just the way you want. You know, different video options, different audio options, control, you name it. And so, Here's Time Pilot. This is kind of an all-time favorite old-school game of mine, and it is a lot of fun, and it played great, and really this uh, Retro 2 did a good job with Game Boy games. Now there's two different N64 plugins for the Retro 2. There's one with controller support where you can actually use your N64 controllers. And this one that doesn't have that, it's a little bit cheaper, but both are actually sold out at the moment on Stone Age Gamer, but you can sign up and be notified when they come back in stock. I was using keyboard for controls, but looks great. And I was easily able to dump the ROMs onto my desktop of my favorite N64 games. And as you can see, it actually, uh, N64 games actually look a lot better in an emulator, you know, the power of, uh, you know, additional processing power. And so I could see how this would be very popular with people that want to take their games, especially their save files, and transfer them to PC, where you get the additional benefit of having the N64 games look great. I actually think this is a really good product. It's really easy and convenient to back up your ROMs and save files, as well as valuable prototypes and pre-production carts that you have. You know, those ROMs are not gonna stay forever on a cartridge. They do eventually die. And I think it's important as a collector to back up your save files, your ROMs, because you never know when a cart's gonna go dead and you can still then play the game as intended and so thank you so much for the ongoing support i had a lot of fun 
with this video. There's a lot of stuff out there that's lost all the time and I appreciate products like this because it might be able to save various games that have very few copies left in the world. Hit that like and subscribe button and if you're interested in this product you can go to stoneagegamer.com where they have it. The link is below. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. You folks take care.